Suzette La Flèche, later Suzette La Flèche Tibbles, also called Inshata Thumba, Bright Eyes, 1854 to 1903, was a well-known Native American writer, lecturer, interpreter, and artist of the Omaha tribe in Nebraska. La Flèche was a progressive who was a spokesperson for Native American rights. She was of Ponca, Iowa, French and Anglo-American ancestry. In 1983, she was inducted into the Nebraska Hall of Fame. In 1994, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. Early life and education Suzette, also called Inshata Thumba Bright Eyes, was one of five children born to Joseph Lafleche and his wife Mary Gale. Joseph was the son of the French fur trader Joseph La Flèche, a wealthy immigrant from France, and his Ponca wife, Wauwinchcha, reportedly a relative of the Omaha chief Big Elk. Joseph, also called Instamaza Iron Eye, had started with the American Fur Company at age 16, after accompanying his father from the age of 10 on his trips. After his parents separated because of his father's long trips, the younger La Flèche lived with his mother and her family among the Omaha. She married again, as did his father. Joseph's half-brother, Frank Lafleche, White Swan, became a chief of the Ponca and was influential in the lives of Joseph's children. Joseph married Mary Gale, also called Hinuaganan, one woman, the mixed-race daughter of Dr. John Gale, a surgeon at Fort Atkinson, Nebraska, and Ni Ko Ma, his Iowa wife. After Gale abandoned his consort and child in Nebraska, Ni Ko Ma married the fur trader Peter Sarpy. After some years of trading with the Omaha while working with Peter Sarpy, the younger La Flèche was adopted as a son by the chief Big Elk. He named him successor to his position. La Flèche Iron Eyes became the last traditional chief of the Omaha. The La Flèches were a prominent, affluent and acculturated family among the Omaha. La Flèche and Mary stressed the importance of education for their children, Louis, Suzette, Rosalie, Marguerite and Susan, and favored assimilation. They thought it offered the best future for their people. The La Flèche family supported the missionary schools and white teachers for their children. Mary La Flèche died about 1855. Joseph married again, to Ta and Nay Elizabeth Esau, an Omaha woman. The following year, 1857, their son Francis La Flèche was born, followed by other children. After the Presbyterian Mission School on the reservation closed, Suzette La Flèche attended a girls' school in Elizabeth, New Jersey, where she was followed by her younger sisters Marguerite and Susan. Her writing skills were recognized and encouraged during her school years. Suzette's siblings also became professionals. Susan Lafleche Picot became the first Native American physician and founded the first privately funded hospital on an Indian reservation, and Rosalie Lafleche Player became a financial manager for the Omaha Nation, leasing grazing land that was excess to individual household needs. Marguerite Lafleche Picot was a teacher on the Yankton Sioux Reservation, having married Charles Picot. Their half-brother Francis Lafleche became an ethnologist for the Smithsonian Institution, writing about the Omaha and the Osage, and making original recordings of their traditional songs. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Career. As a young woman, Suzette Lafleche became more interested in politics and soon graduated and learned how to speak English. She first worked as a teacher on the Omaha Reservation. Since her paternal grandmother and uncle were Ponca, she and her father traveled to Oklahoma to investigate conditions after the tribe's forced removal from Nebraska to Indian Territory. The U.S. government had reassigned the Ponca land in Nebraska to the Great Sioux Reservation. La Flesh worked with Thomas Tibbles, an editor with the Omaha World Herald, to publicize the poor conditions they found at the Southern Reservation. The Ponca had been moved too late in the year to plant crops, the government was late with supplies and promised infrastructure and improvements, and malaria was endemic in the area. Nearly one third of the tribe died within the first two years as a result of the journey and conditions, among them the oldest son of Chief Standing Bear. The chief left the Indian Territory with some followers to bury his son in the traditional homeland of Nebraska. They were arrested and confined to Fort Omaha, by order of the federal government. Tibble's coverage of the chief's imprisonment was instrumental in gaining standing bare pro bono legal services by two prominent defense attorneys, including the counsel for the Union Pacific Railroad. Standing Bear filed a suit of habeas corpus against the U.S. government, challenging the grounds for his arrest. 
In 1879 La Flesche acted as the chief's interpreter during his trial at Fort Omaha, Nebraska. She also testified as to conditions on the reservation in Indian Territory. Standing Bear successfully challenged the lack of grounds of his arrest and imprisonment, arguing before the United States District Court that Indians were persons under the law, and had all the rights of U.S. citizens. Tibbles attended and reported the case, which gained national attention. Standing Bear v. Crook 1879 was a landmark civil rights case, with the judge deciding that Indians had certain rights as persons and citizens under the U.S. Constitution. Following the trial, La Flesche and her half-brother Francis accompanied Standing Bear and others on a speaking tour of the eastern United States, organized by Tibbles. In addition to taking turns interpreting for Standing Bear, Suzette La Flesche spoke in her own right. During the tour, La Flesche and Tibbles also testified in Washington in 1880 before a congressional committee about the Ponca removal. La Flesche spoke for the rights of Native Americans. They met prominent American writers, such as the poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow and writer Helen Hunt Jackson. In 1881 Jackson published a book about U.S. treatment of Native Americans entitled A Century of Dishonor, and in 1884 the novel Ramona, based on Indian issues in Southern California. Longfellow reportedly said of La Flesche, This could be Minnehaha. Referring to the legendary Indian heroine in his poem The Song of Hiawatha, in 1887, La Flesche and Tibbles, by then married, accompanied Standing Bear on a ten-month speaking tour of England and Scotland. La Flesche continued to act as the chief's interpreter. They were heard by many who wanted to learn more about the American Indian issues in the United States. After their return to Nebraska, La Flesche and Tibbles became interested in the growing ghost dance movement and issues among the rest of Sioux bands. They went to the Pine Ridge Agency in 1890 and wrote about its conditions, as well as the Wounded Knee Massacre. This work was likely the peak of Lafleche's journalism career. She continued to publish articles and columns in papers in Nebraska, including her husband's populist The Independent. Marriage <laughs> 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 La Flesche and Thomas Tibbles were married in July 1881, after his wife died. During the next 14 years, the couple spent some time in Washington, D.C. but lived mostly in Nebraska. While in Washington, La Flesche wrote and lectured on Native American issues. For instance, she gave an address to the Association for the Advancement of Women, on the position, occupation, and culture of Indian women. In Nebraska, she spent time farming on her allotment of land as a tribal member on the Omaha Reservation and also writing. Her husband managed her father's property. They lived there most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Literary works Nedawi, an Indian story from real life, was published in the children's magazine St. Nicholas in 1881. Nedawi is thought to be the first short story written by an American Indian which was not based on legend. Omaha Legends and Tent Stories. Wide Awake. 1883, in Karen L. Kilkip, ed. Native American Women's Writing c. 1800-1924, an anthology. With Fanny Reed Griffin, Bright Eyes co-authored the book, Umaha Ta Wada, 1898, and illustrated it. Introduction to the novel, Plowed Under, the story of an Indian chief, as told by himself, 1881, by William Justin Harsha. She also illustrated the book, which she edited. Introduction to the Ponca Chiefs, by Thomas Tibbles. La Flesche wrote columns for the Omaha World Herald and her husband's populist paper, The Independent. Topic. Legacy and honors 1903, after her death, La Flesche Tibbles was eulogized in the U.S. Senate. 1983, in recognition of her role as a spokesperson and writer about her people, Suzette, Bright Eyes, La Flesche Tibbles was inducted into the Nebraska Hall of Fame. 1994, induction into the National Women's Hall of Fame.